this video is sponsored by Envato Elements. Hey everyone, how is it going? Hope you're having a wonderful day. In this video tutorial, I'll show you the step-by-step -step process of how I created this digital concept art in Photoshop. You'll also learn some photo bashing techniques and how I use pictures to help speed up my workflow. I believe this is one of the best ones I've made so far, which is why please make sure you watch the whole video till the end so you don't miss any valuable information. If you are new to this channel, please make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content related to art and illustrations. Alright, so without wasting any more time, let's do this! So it all started with this one image of a badass dude in a leather jacket on a motorcycle. I saw this photo on Envaro Elements while browsing through stuff and I thought I should definitely make an artwork using this. So I downloaded the image, brought it to Photoshop and started making loose selection around the guy and his bike. Now you must have noticed that I'm not doing a great job at making very nice and clean selections, that's because I want to use this image as a base. I'm gonna paint over it anyway so I'm not really worrying about how clean the edges are. However, if I were doing a photo manipulation or a poster or something, I would have been more careful. So after I've made the selection and cut out the bike, it's time to think of a background and something sci-fi or cyberpunkish. Thankfully, I found this photo too on Envato Elements, so I decided to use it as a base background image. Now the motorcycle needs some shadow on the ground so that it looks better and fits with the environment a little more, so I painted some loose shadows. Then I made a selection in the background and filled that shape with black color. I dropped another photo of a street with glowing neon lights and stuff, put this photo's layer exactly above the layer with the black shape, hovered my mouse in between the two layers and pressed the Alt key, magic. I adjusted the image so that the perspective matches a bit more. But then it didn't quite look right so I dropped another photo, put that too into the black shape layer and adjusted it to where it looked good. Then I moved the photo with the neon lights above this new photo and changed the blending mode to color dodge. Now it's going somewhere. I experimented with the neon lights for a while, copying and pasting stuff from one place to another just to balance the composition. Now I need to give this artwork kind of a greenish tone. The background is kind of green, but the midground and the main subject, it's more towards the blue, which is something I need to fix. So I changed the colors of the midground to match them to the background using the match color feature in Photoshop. Don't know about that little trick? I've explained it in another video in detail. I'll include a link for you. Before proceeding further and making a kick-ass artwork out of these images, I'd like to talk about where I got them. Yes, you guessed it right, they're from Envato Elements which is a massive library of over 52 million assets including high quality stock photos, footage, fonts, music, templates and many more. I particularly like their 3D assets because sometimes you just can't find the images at the right angle and that's where these 3D assets come in. So if you need an image of a dragon at a particular angle, you just go and search the 3D models on Envato Elements and there you'll get the attacking dragon, dragon on a rock, komodo dragon, origami dragon, golden dragon, chinese dragon, low poly dragon, even a dragonfly. You select whichever you like, click on the view 360 render, set it to the angle that you like and save it as a PNG to use it in one of your artworks. How cool is that? I've been using Envato Elements for quite some time now and it has really helped me with the client projects as well as my YouTube video production. You can download as many assets as you want with just one subscription. If you choose to buy it through the link down in the description, you'll not only get access to millions of royalty free photos in 3D for your work but also support me as a creator. Alright, back to the video now. Now the motorcycle doesn't quite fit with the background in terms of design. The background looks very sci-fi so I need to think about the design for this motorcycle too. Let's start by altering its shape a little bit. So I made a selection around the front tire and took it farther away from the body of the bike and it's already looking a bit better. When I'm making artworks like these I don't have a super clear vision of what exactly I want to make. I just like to design stuff along the way and take creative decisions as I go. So right now the background looked a bit empty and I thought of making some sort of a crowd, maybe a few people here and there. I just made some silhouettes, I think they don't need to be very detailed because they are in the background and they are less important than what I really want to show in this artwork which is the main figure on the bike. So it's very important that you develop a visual hierarchy in your artwork. Not everything has to be super detailed in an artwork. The stuff that is the most important should be more focused in terms of visual detail. 
Now let's start with giving this bike a new look. I started by changing the tires. I found this awesome 3D model reference for the tires so I took a screenshot of it. I'm gonna use a bunch of these 3D references made by different talented artists. I'll link all these below for you so you can check them out. I made selection around the tires, cut them out and pasted it over the appropriate places and it's already looking kickass. Got another cool shape out of another cool bike reference and used it for the main body. But I transformed it into a longer triangular shape and it's already looking good so far. Now similarly I am experimenting with different shapes, modifying it according to the requirement and trying to create something new out of it. It's important that you don't use the whole design as it is, but get these other bits and pieces as shapes and textures and create something new out of it. If you're wondering, I've got all these references from Sketchfab, it's a website with thousands of viewable 3D models. Again, I've credited all the artists and included the links for all the models down in the description. By the way, I felt like the front tire was a little off, so I replaced it. Then I started painting some shadows on the bike to make the photo bashed images gel better together. The tires had too much color, so I got rid of it, matched the color with the rest of the bike. Now of course the bike doesn't really look like a part of the overall environment so I need to match the color of the bike to that green color in the background. For that I'll make a couple of copies of the bike and color match both layers to the greens that are in the background. But I'll keep the top layer a bit lighter and the bottom layer a bit darker. Then I create a clipping mask over the brighter layer and fill it with black color so the layer is invisible. Using the white color and a nice brush I paint back the highlights on the bike. If you didn't understand this technique, I've explained it better in another video, I'll include a link for you. Now I'm painting over the character using loose brush strokes, painting shadows on the jacket and changing the design of the helmet a bit more. I'm also painting some highlights and reflections on the front of the helmet. Then just painting some more over the images, fixing some stuff up. Then I added shadows to the background and color corrected the image to a more greenish tint. Also lowered the color saturation cause too much green was giving me a headache. To separate the main subject from the background, I painted some very light desaturated green with low opacity. And then I added some foreground elements, some dark silhouetted shapes cause the space looked very empty. I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna be putting in the foreground but that's a problem for another time. Maybe I'll put a bunch of people here, I don't know yet. Now I'm painting on some highlights on the bike, making the shapes more visible and then fixing some errors in the background like stretching some photos, darkening the edges of stuff and adding bright highlights to some parts. I also felt like the people in the background need to be a bit darker so I'm painting over them using a dark green color. Again, I'm painting very loosely cause who cares about these people in the background when we have a badass biker in the front. I also fixed the neon lights and painted some new ones too. I feel like it's better to change and add stuff to the already existing images. It helps the photos merge better in the artwork, making the whole thing feel as one artwork instead of a collage of photos. I also darkened the edges of the artwork and added some kind of greenish glow in the background. After that some bright green highlights on the back of this character to really separate him from the crowd of people behind him. I love doing this part by the way, but not as much as I love doing the next part which is to select a big soft round brush with low opacity, set the blending mode to color dodge and paint over the highlights in the background using each light's own color. This gives the lights a bright glow which looks awesome. I realized that the left side of the background was a little too dark, so I decided to paint some white lights there. I created them by first making a rectangular selection, filling it with the white color and then copying and pasting the same shape to create a few more lights. I also painted some white over these light shapes using a big round brush with low opacity. It gives the light source a nice glow. So far it's going pretty nice, looking pretty good. Now I could stop it right here or I can experiment and play around with it a little more. Like there's a lot of room for more guys on the left. To do that I have two options. I could throw in some images directly into the composition or I can loosely paint the dudes first and see if they look good over there. And I went with painting the silhouettes first. I think the white light coming from the left would look really cool on the edges of these dudes. And the composition would look much fuller. So I grabbed a photo of this hooded dude from the Invar website, made selection around it and got rid of the background. Then I adjusted it over the already painted figure and erased the bottom of the image cause who needs legs right? 
just kidding. I just want to use my painted legs, that's all. I like the mixture of photograph and painted stuff. I also matched the color of the dude to the background and added highlights on him. Then I made the shadows darker, refined the shapes a bit more, especially the weird legs that this guy has, and some green highlights were needed. Oh, and to lose the photographic details, I painted over the face and added appropriate shadows. Next, I found another photo for the other guy and similarly made a selection around this one too. I then slapped that photo onto the artwork and repeated the same steps that I did for the hooded guy. You know, erasing the bottom, matching the color, basically making everything green and dark to match with the background. The silhouette shape of this guy was very roughly done so I erased and refined the edges a bit more. And then I changed the appearance of this guy cause he didn't look very cyberpunk to me. How about we paint his hair long? Not that he would instantly look cyberpunkish, but hey, it's definitely better now. And now my favorite part, adding some tasty white rim lights to the edges of these guys. It's so satisfying to do. I also added some of that white light to the stuff in the foreground, you know, the wires and stuff. And of course, why would our main figure miss any of that sweet light, so I painted some of that light on him as well. So yeah, now the artwork is pretty much done. Now I'll just be fixing some of the stuff in the background and kinda scribble here and there, add big shadows and smaller highlights, stuff like that. This artwork was so much fun to do and it's very different to most of the stuff that I've been creating. You know that I tend towards fantasy related art but I'm glad I went for this super sci-fi stuff for a change. I hope you guys learned something new from this video, if it was helpful, kindly leave a like and a comment down below, let me know your thoughts and suggestions, and if you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe. Follow me on Instagram for some cool artwork and join the Discord server for sharing your drawings and learning through a community. Alright then, I'll see you guys in another video, take care, bye bye.